and you are back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So we've started again. It's take 489,000, but I was back in the gym. I went a few times last week. It was a little warm up session last week, but now I'm taking it serious again. I'm getting the rig back into gear. I'm going back to jiu-jitsu tomorrow, even though my rib's still fucked and even though my knee is still fucked as well. But what am I going to do? I'm not getting any younger. Is it going to heal? Probably not. Do you heal at my age or do you just fucking deal with it? You just deal with it. Fucking move on. It's been like five months now. I've been out of jits for five months. I'm having nightmares about going back to jits and fucking getting submitted by the cunts I was absolutely ragdolling five months ago. And I've got no stamina. This is going to be a very humbling experience again. I have to go in with no expectations. I don't even know if I'm going to have the same fucking strength. In the gym, I'm fine, but twisting and turning and pulling and holding, and that's just in the change rooms. <laughs> Remember, cunts, I'm a comedian first, philosopher second, crane operator third, jujitsu four stripe white belt third or fourth. I can't even remember what I'm up to. Bitcoiner, actually, I'm probably Bitcoiner either second because Bitcoin is sort of like a philosophy. Maybe even first, who knows? If it goes to 150,000 in the next fucking six months, I will be a Bitcoiner first. Anyway, tomorrow. I'm going back to jujitsu. I just have to do it. I have to fucking rip the band-aid off. I've been avoiding it for the last couple of weeks. Well, I haven't been avoiding it. I had Easter, I had guests over, it's been busy. But yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Here we go. I also started writing a little bit more stand-up today as well. As much as I hate stand-up, <laughs> as much as I hate comedy and stand-up and doing it and everything about it, I do feel better when I'm writing stand-up than when I'm not. So I don't know. That must be some sort of like guide that I need to be doing it. And I did. I felt good writing some stuff about pedophilia today. <laughs> that's what it was about. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Pedophiles. I don't have any pedophile bits. Pedophiles is pretty hack now. Like whenever I hear people bring up pedophiles now... It's just the same as like airplane food or something like that. Just every hack open mic has done it. And most hack professionals have done it as well. But if you can do it well, any fucking subject's all right. So I'm going to get out and about and start fucking trying out this new material. Start building it up. Build up the hour. Write the show about death. Then fucking go back to the UK and Ireland. Maybe even Edinburgh. Maybe I'll do Edinburgh next year. We'll see. Hopefully there's been some sort of nuclear attack so I don't have to go back to Edinburgh. Actually, I would like to go back to Edinburgh. I'd like to do it right this time. It's a lot of fucking money though. And it's a long time. I don't know if I can do a month away from the fucking... The fam again. We'll see. Maybe I'll just do fucking like Manchester or Liverpool and London again. And Dublin and maybe even like Cork or something. I would like to see a little bit more of England. And I would love to see a little bit more of fucking Ireland too. So we'll fucking see how that works out next year. I've got about a half hour of new material I didn't do last time I was there. Plus like a jaggedy like 10. And then I'll work. Anyway, I'll, it'll be a new hour by the time I get back there. So that's happening. I'm also fucking, I don't know. I'm not sold on this sleep device that I've got I've been wearing it most nights now and I can't fucking tell if I'm breathing through my nose or not all I know is it's so fucking tight that when I take it off first thing in the morning as soon as I wake up the bottom comes off fine but the top is on so fucking tight that it feels like it may rip my teeth out it's not a good feeling and on top of that, I don't even know if I'm fucking breathing through my mouth or my nose. I don't want to have to tape up my mouth. That's why I got this stupid thing. But I suppose the dentist was like, it doesn't matter if you tape up your mouth if your jaw falls back. So maybe I just have to do both. 
I'm over it. I'm over health, to be honest with you. I'm also getting sucked into barefoot shoes now as well. I don't know if anyone's heard of these, but Catherine and Mark, the comedians that stayed with me last week, were wearing them and they've convinced me. So now I'm measuring my feet up. I'm looking at brands. I'm into barefoot shoes now. It's meant to be good for you. And I'll just do anything, anything that is like crackpot. <laughs> anything off the wall and it this is one of the prerequisites to all that as well it has to be expensive as long as it's off the wall and crackpot and expensive i'm in sign me up please so barefoot shoes it looks like it's going to have to be a whole family thing as well you meant to have kids in them i don't know if anyone wears barefoot shoes out there can you please tell me about them i think it's like a cult I think it's like Bitcoin for like feet. Cunts are obsessed with it. I don't want to go on a deep dive. I've been on too many fucking deep dives. So I'm just asking Catherine. I'm just like, just fucking tell me what pair of shoes to buy and I'll buy them. I haven't got time to become a believer. I'm believing because you told me and I'll just do it. So you're going to be looking forward to some barefoot shoes content coming up. And I think I do need them because I do have a fat foot and they've always felt uncomfortable in normal shoes. I've never really worn normal shoes. I've always been in like thongs. Thongs or boots. Boots for going out, but thongs for absolutely everything else. Anyway, fucking it's Monday. It's time to fucking spark up another segment of Ask Boil. It's Ask Boil time. So if you have a question you would like answered by one of the greatest minds of the generation or any generation, comedian, philosopher, barefoot shoe wearer, le boyal, then head to my website, boilcomedy.com. There's a section there for Ask Boils. Put in your details, ask your question. While you're there, send in a Fucked Up Friday story as well. There's a section for Fucked Up Fridays there too. Just do the same thing, but put a story in. I'll get to that, and more importantly than both of those, while you're there, why don't you join up to the Patreon, become a true degeny, a supportive fucking degeny. It's a pint a month, and you get access to an extra episode a week of the Degeny Diaries, where I interview one of you degenerates, the listeners, or a comedian that's staying at my house, or Andrew Roberts. (laughs) But they've been coming out great. Nothing but good reviews about the Degeny Diaries. So jump on board. You'll see the link on my website. Anyway, let's get to this week's question. So this week's question was sent in a while back via Instagram by my man fucking Chris. Either Kikoria or Sikoria. I'm going with Sikoria. I don't think it would sound right, Kikoria. It's C-I-C... O R I A. Sicoria. Sicoria? Who knows? Anyway, here's his question Is there a specific reason that travel is weaved into the fabric of being Australian? I feel like every Australian between the ages of 16 to 25 has been to about 20 different countries. Does it have something to do with being born on a deserted island? How do you get the money to do so? In my experience as an American, only rich kids, exchange students, are able to travel abroad at a young age and isn't necessarily a priority in general. Well, (laughs) Kikoria, you have come to the right place. Yes, unfortunately for the rest of the world, Australians do love to travel. We let any scumbag out of this country. America only send their best, like their rich kids and exchange students, who are also rich kids. The elites, the masters of the universe, the best people, the wealthy. (laughs) And they're still fucking annoying every time you see a loud American fucking overseas. They have no idea what's going on. You see a few poorer ones out these days. It's good to see. I'd say that's because it probably costs about the same to travel within the States as it does somewhere like Mexico. 
Anyway, Australia is different. We just let anyone out. It's a mixture. There's a there's a few different reasons. I would say the number one reason is we don't value education very highly. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. So if there's any excuse we can use to not go to university for fucking like six years or something, we'll take it. And travel is the best reason. I'm just going to take a year off to travel. Yeah, right. I'm going to take six years and I'm never going to go back to university. I'm going to start a travel vlog and come home and be a barista for fucking six months a year. So university, like at my school, my school was a particularly bad school, but I would say 70% of the kids that went to my school, more than that, never went to university, never thought about going to university. It was never going to happen. They didn't give a fuck. I think it's a little bit different now, but yeah, like, not going to university wasn't such a big deal back in the day. And your parents, like, fucking encouraged you to go traveling. Like, all our parents are like, go see the fucking world, do something, just fucking get out there while you're young. Tear it up while you're young. And I think that's a very good fucking thing. I think there are things you can do when you're traveling when you're young that you just can't do as you get older. Like, long bus trips jaggedy fucking hungover fucking roads around windies and long boats it it gets difficult it gets demanding on the body as you get older but when you're young you're just bouncing back like doing eight or nine buckets in thailand yeah you're gonna fucking feel like you're dying that night but two nights later you're gonna be fine if i did one bucket now i would have to be hospitalized so there's a lot you can get out of traveling when you're younger. I don't think traveling is the same anymore. I don't know. I'd have to speak to some of the younger listeners of this podcast, but I feel like it's more like you go to a place, you jump on Tinder and meet people that way. I don't know. And half of them seem to be scams now, aren't they? I don't know if you get much serendipitous puss anymore. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. I think people are just about over sex now anyway. It's not as motivating a <laughs> factor. Um, what are some other reasons? Well, the wages here have always been high across the board. So you can work like a real shit job. Like a bartender here now, I think at starting price is like 30 bucks an hour. So you can not do university. You can work as a bartender you can get some decent coin together. You can fucking... You used to be able to rent fairly cheaply here as well. So you could work and save. It was fine. Again, I think that's getting a little bit harder now. So that's another reason. We pay our bogans a lot of money. Tradies get huge coin here. So they're allowed out of the country as well. When I was at university, you used to get this uh, youth allowance or new start. I forget what it fucking was. But you used to get paid by the government to study. It was like four hundred dollars a fortnight or something like that. Maybe four fifty. I can't remember. But if you were a full time student, you would get that for the whole year. And at the end of the year, you got three months. You could be overseas and still receive that payment. So you could go to South America, Asia, and get this money coming in. That if you were frugal and weren't an absolute animal, you could last on that. I never could last on that money, but it was also nice getting it in once a fortnight. So that was the best. I heard they stopped that as well. I think people were just being enrolled full-time in university just to get that three months at the end of the year. Shame on you. Shame on you if you did it for four straight years and only passed six subjects. Shame. I think also another reason is like property prices have always been kind of out of reach for anyone in their 20s. Like the property prices here are fucking out of control now. Like they're insane. Two and a half million dollars for like a four bedroom place in like Balkham Hills and shit, which is like an hour and whatever out of the city. It's crazy. But it was always kind of like that as well. 
It was more in reach than it is now, but it's always felt out of reach. It always felt like you had to sacrifice too much just to get a house. So mostly people were like, mm, fuck that. I'll save some money and I'll just go overseas. I'll have an experience instead of a house. Obviously, the people who forwent the experience and sacrificed and bought houses, that's paying dividends for them now. But did you have the amazing time we had in our 20s? (laughs) Did you? You probably did, but just in your 30s. But that's still problematic. So it's pretty much a rite of passage now, I feel like. It wasn't so much... When I was younger, it sort of like clicked over in our 20s, early 20s. Everyone got like the travel bug. I knew a few mates, my mate Sammy T, he went overseas straight away, but he was like South African. He grew up in South Africa, lived in England, Australia. Like he already had it in his like DNA. Most of my other friends didn't start kicking off until like, 23 or something like that I met some mates in Sydney and that's all they wanted to do and so I was like all right if they're traveling I'll go traveling so I sort of copied them really my mates Jake Horn Morgan they were all like well into traveling so I just sort of followed it and then once I started traveling I was like yeah this is sick so it's a little bit of a combination of all that shit and I think People just start copying each other. (laughs) Like, when you hear someone's doing that, then fucking I'll do it. And then someone else hears about it. And then, you know, it's annoying though, because there's so many fucking Australians overseas ruining our reputation. No one did more damage to the reputation of Australians overseas than I did (laughs) during my fucking days. I really tarnished the Australian name. And then New Zealand for a little while because I pretended to be from New Zealand for a bit. Anyway, fucking, that's all I can come up with now. So that'll do for today. Thanks for the question, Chris O. And I'll see you the fuck later.